convicted as a first felony offender, offense pornography involving a juvenile, sentencing date April 17, 2019, sentenced to a total of seven years, parole date August 29, 2021, good time, not eligible, full term April 30, 2026. Is this information correct, sir? Right, Thank you. Mr. Watt. Okay, I can't hear you very good. I, I don't know, uh, but uh, speak loud and clear. You're about to pull your mask down a little so I can hear you. But anyway, uh, have you taken all four phases of your sex offender treatment? Uh, no, sir. I don't know nothing about that. No, sir. You hadn't done any sex offender treatments. Right. You know, the charge you have is your the charge you have is a very, very serious charge. You got a lot of opposition there. And uh, what is the what programs have you taken since you've been there? None, sir. The only you one had took none. Eat well, uh, we need to talk to somebody, if nothing else, try to get you moved to a facility where you can take some program. Uh, you've been down since 19, and uh, it's a very serious charge there where you were uh, on the phone and uh, pro pornography involving juveniles. And one of the things that I always look at, I love to see someone that has the programs there before they release because, uh, you know, you have opposition from all law enforcement uh, that right now, uh, uh, if you, where are you gonna, where are you gonna live or what kind of employment plan do you have? I, I was working with my brother-in-law, uh, Freddie Bowman, uh, Oliver Cohen, and I gave y'all three addresses, whichever one address y'all let me live at. Okay, let me let me just say one other thing. One of the things you had one count of uh, possession, distribution of pornography. Then you had ten counts possession pornography of juveniles and five counts. And then you were then they charged you with just the the count there. It was several times that you had been involved in this. Really. Huh? So. Uh, at this time, I don't. At this time, I don't have any more questions. Miss Pearl Wise, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Timothy, okay. how you doing? How you doing? Good. Uh, good. Good. Uh, from all accounts, I mean, you were, you are, you're doing well in, in your life. You had a lot of things going for you. you. Got you know, wife that loves you and good family relations so so what is this all about what is this pornography all about i'm sorry i'm sorry I, for some reason i can't hear you say it again say so i didn't do this ma'am the system just failed me uh, so who uh so uh the report indicated that you were the only one that used that computer i don't know ma'am that was in my house. Anybody could do it. Okay. Okay. So your, your, your statement is that you were not in you, you're not into pornography. No, ma'am. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted to know. That's what I wanted to know. All right. That's all I had. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. We'll hear from uh Tanya. Just give me just a second. Okay, Miss Tanya, would you like to make a statement? Can you hear me? I can now. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I'm here to speak on Timothy's behalf to tell y'all that uh, I don't know what I can say and what I can't say. I just want to tell y'all that Timothy is a really good man. And when he said the system failed him, I just, I just can't tell you how much they did. My kids always went to my sister, my brother-in-law's house. My brother always babysit my two kids, 
always took the best care that he could. I mean, Timothy never got a fair trial. Timothy never got a trial on what he was accused for. I went to the courthouse to speak on his behalf after he got arrested last time. And his lawyer called my sister and told my sister if I didn't leave the DA's office, the courthouse, then I was going to jail because I went to go speak up for him. My kids wanted to speak up for him. Timothy is just the best person that you can ever get to know. Timothy always minds his business. He doesn't mess with anybody. He goes to work. He takes care of his wife, his kids, and his grandkids. When Timothy tells you, that is absolute truth. I'm sorry, I got my grandbaby here and I'm shaking because this All could right. be in us. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you for your comments. I'll hear from uh, Miss Christy now. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, Timothy is also my uh, brother-in-law. Um, he's my neighbor. He lives two doors down from me and he also works for my husband and I. And I mean, just like Tanya said, I mean, he is a good person. He's a very hard worker. My kids as well, like our kids used to all sleep over there. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, whenever this first happened, I, I, I set my kids down and I asked him, you know, I'm like, you know, did y'all ever feel uncomfortable? Did Tim, Mr. Did Uncle Tim ever do anything? And you're like, no, mom, Uncle Tim stayed in the room. You know, he stayed to himself. You know, they never felt uncomfortable around him. I never felt uncomfortable letting all my kids go spend the night over there. You know, he lived, I mean, we've been in our house for 30, almost 30 years. He's been in their house for almost 30 years, lived by each other all the time, you know, worked together. I mean, I just, I, you know, I, I don't think that any of it's true. I, I think that he is innocent and I believe in, in what he says, you know. Um, I mean, I am here to support him. And whenever he gets out, he does have a job with us if he wants it. And, you know, I, I hope that you can see that, you know, I, I know that things doesn't look good in his favor. But I mean, honestly, I mean, we have nine uh, nieces and nephews all together. And we were always together. We always did a lot of family functions. And, you know, Tim just like, like Tanya said, you know, hard worker, he loves his wife, he loves his kids, he loves his family. I just you know, I just don't believe it. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, now we'll hear from uh, Miss Katie. Yes, sir. Okay, Miss Katie, would you like to make a statement? Okay, I have Katie and Savannah. Would you like to make a statement? Can you hear me? I can now. Okay, I'm not going to actually make the statement. My daughter is Savannah. Okay, so you're Katie and Savannah's going to make a statement? Correct, sir. Okay. Hello? Okay, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, I am against Timothy coming on parole. Whenever we went to court to put him in prison, they said he wasn't going to get parole. And that made me feel a lot safer because when I was younger, whenever my parents were going through a divorce, my sister always wanted to go to Renee's house and my dad made me go with her. But I didn't wanna go because whenever it came late at night, my sister would be asleep, but I couldn't sleep because he would come in the living room and he would lay next to me and he would touch me inappropriately and it makes me very nervous talking right now because if he does get out then i'm scared that something will happen to me or my family because 
when he was touching me, he told me that if I did anything about it, or if I told anybody, then he would hurt my sister and my mom. And I'm shaking so much right now because I know how much he means to other people and I don't want to take that away from other people, but I don't want him touching other little girls and boys like he did me. I'm I'm really messed up to this day. I it just makes me so scared of all men and oh, me. how could they any little kid? I was I was so small. I just, I want to keep my sister safe and I want to keep my cousin safe and I don't want him hurting anyone else like he hurt me. All right. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you. Timothy, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? We can't hear you. Get a little closer. We can't hear what you're saying. I said it's lies. What that little girl was just saying is lies. I didn't never touch that little girl. I never touched a little child in my life to do anything or any kind of harm to them. I risked my own life to save my great nieces and nephews on several occasions to help them. Did you, did you plead to a charge or did you uh, yeah, go to a trial? I, I had to plead to the deal. It was either they were threatening me. I was bullied basically into the plea deal. I either take the, they were trying to give me eight years, but it, it started down to seven years. I either take that or spend the rest of my life in jail, which uh, I've never seen my family, wife, anything like that again. So I took the seven years so I could at least see my family and, and children again for a little bit of the rest of my life. Well, if you were if you weren't guilty, then if if you'd have gone to trial, don't you think you would have been found not guilty? Uh, if I'd have had a lawyer that would have defended me, the public defender that was supposed to be uh, defending me just sat in the courtroom, wouldn't say a word. He just sat there every time that I tried to say something, they would tell me to sit down and shut up, or I wasn't allowed to talk. It was, just, it was a big mess, and I got I just I felt it was my best interest where I could see at least see my wife and family. At least you know a few more years of my life before I pass, take the charge. Okay, well, uh, look, I, I guess it's, I, I mean, I guess that's what it is. I would, I would advise you if you weren't guilty for anything in the future to, to probably fight it, is what I would advise. But, we but uh, fight it. I would, for, I, we tried, yes, fight, sir. I tried, I tried going through all the, uh, the, uh, the appeals things. But they to, to say that I had any uh, any effective counsel, but they none of them they, they all just uh, just missed it. I don't, I don't know how to explain okay. it. Not good, all right, yes, sir. All right. <coughs> Is the panel prepared to vote, Mr. Jim Wise? Yes, sir. At this time I vote gonna be to uh deny your pro. I'm denying your pro one reading because you need uh, sex offender programs, all four phases. And uh, and you got strong law enforcement opposition against your release and victims. All right, Ms. Perlwise. <laughs> yes, Mr. Timothy, I, I, it's unfortunate that you know we're in a pandemic and so programs are not as available as they usually are. But I concur with my colleagues, my vote is denied due to the lack of like of programs and uh, the law enforcement oppositions. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank you, man. All right, you have two votes to denial. Some of you vote to deny for law enforcement opposition, victim opposition. You definitely, you need some programming. You definitely do need some programming. Hopefully you can get that. Uh, three votes to deny. Today your parole's been denied. Good luck to you. And we'll adjourn at 1116 at Everville. What we just saw, what we just saw is what's everything that is wrong with the system everything we're going to unpack this with the information that richard provided and it's only going to piss you off more if that's even possible how is it that you have you know i i, I try to avoid this board when you have jim wise miss wise 
and Brennan Kelsey. And that's why I've been avoiding to do this hearing. I haven't been, you know, I just see those three pop up and I don't want to deal with it. But I'm quite upset that it took me so long to get to this because this is the type of cases that is why I do this, because this type of information needs to be shared. People are sick. Who in their right mind can support this monster? To listen to the family say, oh, he's great. He never did anything. I bring my children to his house all the time. My knees, my... And, and, and the only thing I'm thinking, I'm shaking. I'm shaking. How is it that you can do that? How many victims does he have? To have to listen to his supporters say how he is innocent, to have to listen to his supporters talk about how he's there was no trial. He took a plea deal. To have to hear them talk about how they want to, how their kids were there all the time for sleepovers. And then that there's no DA that shows up to support clearly. And, and how brave is she to stand up there? And you can hear her shaking, her voice shaking, but she takes the, the bravery to stand up there and give a speech that is deserving to be seen by millions. And yet the board, you have Miss Wise that's just pretending to listen with her awkwardly timed head nods. You have Jim Wise, who was in who, I don't know what planet, and then Brendan Kelsey, who's typing away at the computer and saying, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go, why don't you give her the attention it deserves and listen to what she is saying? I think most of us that listen to her either shed a tear, had some type of human reaction of some sort, if they were, if you, if you were listening. And then when he comes up and starts saying how he's innocent, Brennan Kelsey is entertaining it. And you might say, well, he was just trying to get to the point of why he's guilty. If you're actually, you know, you should have at least gone to court. Why did you? But think about what that does to the to the survivor who just got up and spoke. That's not the way to handle it. Mr. Roche would have put him in his place. Miss Jackson would have put him in his place. Mr. Marabella would have put him in his place, I believe. They would have said... I know how the court system works. You pled guilty because they had evidence, and they did have a ton of evidence. This wasn't just a – they had computer images. They What they found on his computer, three people were arrested in this crime. This was not a simple – Just a, this, this was a case where the DA actually was holding a royal flush – and the idea that they gave him a seven-year sentence and that he he was sentenced in 2019. He was up for parole just three years later after taking his plea deal. I do have some good news to share with you in a little bit. So hang in there. But first, let's go through the idea that we can get this information, Richard can pull this information up, where it talks about his guilt, yet their family is so in denial. <sighs> Three people were arrested on this child exploitation and molestation. He was charged 150 counts of images and videos under the age of 13. Three counts of distribution of those images and two counts of producing the images. He was producing them. 
That means he's making them. And he got seven years? All of these charges and he gets seven years? With chance of parole after three? You can't make this stuff up. He is a cockroach. He is evil. He is a monster. But then his family members that support him should be in prison with him. The DA that doesn't show up, frankly, should be in prison with him. The DA that signed the deal, the judge that agreed to it, they had enough to lock him up for life. Where? Why didn't they bring federal charges? Is that not possible? Was he not trading it? You had the computer. Why was it not? I do not understand. How it is that you feel that locking someone up like this, who still denies his crime, I don't care if he denies it or doesn't, just seven years. Well, here's the good news. This idiot, this roach, this monster actually attempted to escape prison. Yes. He attempted to escape July 5th of 2023, and he was caught. So he could have just waited and had a good time date of 2025 or 2026, but no, he couldn't help himself. So let's go listen to this, right? In custody, a trustee who escaped from the Iberville Parish Jail arrested this afternoon in St. Mary Parish. News News' Alexis Marini spoke with the sheriff about the escape and has new details tonight. Sheriff Brett Stassi tells me it took almost two hours before anyone noticed the convicted felon had left the jail. Early Tuesday morning, a registered sex offender escaped from the Iberville Parish Jail during a shift change. Timothy Biot, a state prison inmate, was a trustee. And investigators say he got away in an unmarked sheriff's car. Sheriff Brett Stassi says this was Biot's first incident at the jail. Three and a half years, not a bobble. Stassi says Biot left the jail around 6 a.m. Tuesday. As a trustee, he was allowed extra freedoms as he worked doing laundry. He made his plan to leave the, at the jail. And as the, the radio operators left at 6 a.m. in the morning when they changed shift, when they asked for the gate to be open, he followed them out. In this video from the jail, one car opens the gate, then two follow. Stassi says Biot is in the third truck. It wasn't until two hours later when staff realized he was gone. And once we was located, we, we called him. I, I went to the jail along with my command staff, and it was determined that he was not on the jail facility and that vehicle was missing. Stassi suspects during a break on Friday, Biot walked into the car shop, which is next to the bathroom, and grabbed a set of keys to a decommissioned sheriff's unit. We learned something. Everybody learned something. Uh... Biot is the second inmate to elude Iberville Sheriff's deputies this year after Tyler Jackson ran from a transport van in April. Stassi promises security changes at the jail. We're going to change the way the keys are kept. They need to be... Uh, under a little bit better lock and key system uh, and limit the access to the keys. He also says after this escape, Biot will be charged with simple escape and theft of a motor vehicle. Now, Biot was found in St. Mary Parish around 345 this afternoon. Sheriff Stassi says Biot was hiding behind a levee when they found him. He ran when police when he, when he was seen by police. Alexis Mary, WBRZ News 2. And how terrifying is that? Now, I bet you his wife and his uh, whoever it was, his other family members are probably back at the jail screaming he's innocent of that, too. He didn't steal the car. He didn't escape. He was just going for a joyride. Yeah, I wonder what they're preaching. Are you kidding me?
<laughs> and then the sheriff's like, well, I guess we need a better system. I know we've had two people escape in this year, but we'll put the keys uh, to our vehicles in a lock. <laughs> and uh, yeah, of course, he has a uh, he was a trusted he's a trusted inmate. So um, but it is it is uncharacteristic of roaches to do things like this. They typically have no write ups and don't do anything wrong. But I am glad that he shot himself in the face. Uh, and did do something wrong. Now, the amount of time that he can get, he was charged with simple uh, escape and uh, theft of a vehicle. So legislation in Louisiana allows for the maximum sentence to be um, that he cannot serve less than two years, no more than five years, which, by the way, I don't know how this is, you know, I mean, if the maximum you get for five years for escape, it, it doesn't seem to be a proper punishment, frankly. There are people who have life sentences. It's like, why not escape? You're not facing, you know, or they have it. You know, it's a 10-year sentence. I mean, it never makes, in this case, it obviously made no sense. He only had, I think, three years left on his sentence. I hope they give him the maximum, of course, but it just doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. Uh, you would think that they would give more, but let's see what they give for a car theft. I bet you they give much more for a car theft. Um, whoever commits the crime of theft of a motor vehicle when the misappropriation or taking amounts value of $25,000 or more, which that truck certainly did, will be imprisoned at hard labor for no more than 20 years or may be fined not more than $50,000. So it says no more than 20, not more than 20. So that seems that there's no rate like the judge can basically do zero to 20. All I can do in this case is pray. I think we can pray that a judge will look at this criminal and say, I don't know. Hopefully the DA doesn't give a deal. That's first of all. Hopefully we get a DA that does not give a deal and says, screw you. Um, you can go to trial. I don't care. We got all the proof we need. You're going to lose. And then I hope that he gets the maximum. I hope he gets 25 full years because that's what he did. That's what he deserves. That's the, what the world needs to keep us safe. Um, now, this happened relatively recently, so uh, it's, you know, I think, I guess it all happens. Um, thank you again, Richard, for the info. It happens the um, July 5th, 2023, the time of this filming, we're in February 23rd, 2024. It's possible that he hasn't taken a plea deal yet. He's filing motions. But we don't have the records of uh, 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 what his additional sentence is. Um, Richard did share something, but it's not pulling up for me for whatever reason. But uh, hopefully, you know, if we do have more information, I'll pin it for you. Um, and you know, that would be able to, I guess, tell us what, what a sentence he got. But as soon as we could figure out what additional sentence he has, I'll pin it for you because that is something that we should, he, he you know, <laughs> here's the update. He is in Angola. So he was moved from that jail to Angola, which is great, and a proper prison, not just a jail. Um, but we'll try to find out what his full sentence is and pin it. And I guess that at least is the little bit of redeeming factor or justice in this case, if you want to call it that, hopefully you got the full sentence. But he is a monster, and um, monsters need to be locked up, and that's it. And with that, I'll let you go. As a first felony offender, offense.